This video shows how to get a phone photo printed in high resolution color without a color printer assembled using a program called Yotta Print. This is a photo taken on an old smartphone that I found suitable for display. The smartphone is old but still has or produces decent resolution photos. Most smartphones do. You need to get the photo you want onto your computer. First, you need to know the file name. On Android, go to Gallery, select the image you want. To find the name of the file, display the image on your phone. Then, using your phone's Settings button, select Rename. Note the name of the image that you like. Now a little bit of technical know-how is required. You're going to be connecting your phone using the USB cables that came with your phone to your computer in order to get the image out. Once plugged in, the computer, Apple or PC, should recognize the connection. This procedure is for Android, but the procedure to locate photos you want to download from Apple phones is actually easier. On Android, look for something called DSIM and then camera. Buried there you should find the file name that you noted earlier, the file that you want to display. Select copy, and then go to a place on your computer where it will be easy to find later and select paste. Now you have your image ready to load into Yotta Print. Locate and launch the Yotta Print program from where it is installed on your computer. Choose File, Open, and then point to the directory you just saved the image to display from your phone and hit Open. Yotta Print can take some time to load, especially large images. This demonstration is sped up. Make Yotta Print full screen, and then it's time to select your printer. We created a video on how to install a printer driver called the Qt PDF. It's a free PDF printer generator, if you will. And all you have to do to find it is go to YouTube and type in Cute PDF Nissan and you'll see the video. Assuming you have the Cute PDF driver installed, you're going to select it from the printer drop down box. Then you're going to go into properties and you're going to select tabloid for the page size. Tabloid is 11 by 17 and will give you a larger surface for each panel. For this project, I chose a free, randomly sized piece of paneling to help demonstrate how Yotta Print can save money. Most paneling can be recycled to create huge wall murals. This piece is 49 inches wide by 39 inches tall. In Yotta Print, enter the width, making sure the checkbox between width and height is selected. Usually you'd want to print one page at a time, because each pages take time to print. This demonstration shows the entire wall poster printed at once, sped up. Once the print process is finished, you're going to see a box asking you to give the PDF file a file name. Name it something that is pertinent to the image and save it in a place where you can find it. As you can see in this demonstration, Sequoia PDF All shows all of the panels of a large wall poster. The next step to getting a wall poster created without a color printer is to use a professional print service 
such as Kinko's FedEx. In this demonstration, you would go to the FedEx website, find their online printing section. The website may look different from the time that this video was published. And then you would just follow down the path to upload the Sequoia PDF underscore all file that I had created from Yottaprint into the FedEx website. Now that download process was also vastly sped up because the file is quite large. Then once you get all of the panels printed, you head to your local FedEx office and you have all of the pages in a high gloss format ready to create your wall poster. The next step is to lay out all of the pieces that you receive so that you can see how the finished product is going to look. To proceed, you're only going to trim two edges of each page. The left and upper edge on each page is all you need to trim because lower pages are going to be overlaid on top of the previous page's white gap. Starting with page one, using the best paper cutter you can get, cut the left edge and the top edge of each page. Once you get the left and top of each page trimmed, it's time to position the panels using a relatively new product called repositionable glue. These glue sticks are available everywhere, including online. Just make sure the product says repositionable. Next, you're going to take each piece and you're going to cut the top and the left sides only because the bottom and the right sides are going to be overlapped. Cut each piece one by one, cut the end piece, and then position each piece using the repositionable glue. Just sketch out the square, cover the back, and position the piece without being too careful because it is repositionable which means you can move the pieces around. Move across the row and it's time for the next row now. This is before you're going to cut the top and left of each page and just as before you're going to use the repositionable glue to position each page on the paneling. Now the best way we've found to glue the back of each page is to do each corner, go around the edges carefully, and then just do a scribble motion down the middle of each page. Do all pages the same way. Just as before, you're going to move across And then the finished result is almost done except for the bottom row. You'll notice that the pieces for the bottom row of this mural are shorter than the paneling. But you just move across the row and place the pieces using repositionable glue as before. It's not likely you'll run into this situation, but you may have to cut off the bottom row. With paneling, you can use a razor knife, but just be careful not to cut yourself and use a straight edge. The next part of this video is going to show you how to fasten pieces permanently so you can make one hardened piece of art. The first thing you're going to need is this stuff called Mod Podge. And what you do is you take this stuff and you're going to put it on half of the back of each one of the panels 
that you've already positioned with the repositionable glue. This glue will allow you to pull off parts of the pieces so that you can permanently lodge the pieces on the backing with Mod Podge. You just pull off half of a piece at a time. You make sure to carefully go along the edges, fill in the middles, and then just flatten down the piece back to its original position. And then you do the other side. And you go across the mural like this until you've finished the edges. And that's your finished look. After you get to this point, you're going to have what looks like a finished work. But you can take it a second step by covering the top with Mod Podge as well to create a glossy, hardened look that has more permanence. To perform this step, you just start pouring Mod Podge on top of the poster or mural. It's going to feel like you're ruining the piece. The entire time I was sure I was ruining the poster. I had used Mod Podge as a child but forgot what it does. And as you'll see as you keep going the result is surprising. Now you must not hold back on the mod, pouring the Mod Podge right on the front of the mural. Unevenness doesn't count. Parts of it will feel like you can put more on. But again, don't hold back. The more Mod Podge you can get on the piece, the better. So as you can see, once you finish, it looks like the piece is ruined, but let it dry. For added durability and thickness, I even put a second coat over the top of the first. As you can see, the finished product is extremely durable and surprisingly clear. This photo came from a very old smartphone and smartphone pictures today are even higher resolution and will give even clearer results. Brought to you by Nissan, makers of Yachta Print.